Hi, it's Bridget, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Uh, take a nice deep breath with me and exhale <laughs> to everybody a collective sigh. <sighs> Very good. <laughs> okay, I think we all need that. <laughs> all right. Today's topic is give, receive, receive, give. I want to discuss this topic with you. It just popped into mind as I was actually going to do some journaling for myself this morning. And so it felt very inspiring to come and connect and share this with you. So what came forward was a question, a query to ponder. Do you give so that you can receive? You know, does the universe like level it out, even things out, you know, karma or whatever, and you're a good person, so you give, but you kind of do expect to receive some fairness in return, some just balancing out of energy. Like, be honest, do we give so that we know that we can receive at some point? Is it almost like a savings account for the future? Hmm, interesting thought. But when we ask it this other way, it really hits home. So do you receive so that you may give? Oh, doesn't that feel amazing? What if you and I both can agree to at least to begin to shift our consciousness around the topic of giving and receiving? Not as a evening out a justice piece, but as two sides of the same coin, as two parts of a whole, giving and receiving, there must be both in order for either to exist. You can give and give and give, but something must be receiving what you're giving, what you're producing, what you're providing, whether it be at a job, at work, in a relationship, in your garden, etc. There's always a receiving part. There's a receiving component. So what if you and I could agree to become better receivers? Now, this might sound easy. Okay, sure, yeah, I'll receive. I'll just sit back and I'll just receive, receive, receive. I'll just let the good times come on in and all the money and all the health and wellness and And without effort, oh, no, no, receiving is effort. It does cause some work on your end. It's not laziness. Receiving is not laziness. Receiving is not less than. Receiving, if you can receive, it doesn't mean you're less than. You're incapable and adequate of providing for yourself. (gasps) Does it? Have you and I both misunderstood this idea of receiving? Does receiving feel, do you feel bad? Do you apologize? Do you feel less than if you have to receive? If you must be in a situation where you are receiving? Oh my, what does that say about you? Are you not capable? Oh yeah, I like to be a little dramatic. Because you know why? Because this receiving thing is a big deal. It is a really big deal. We focus so much as society. We reward people for their great generosity and their boastful giving. Look at how much this millionaire gives. Look at how much this woman gives of her time and effort and look what she's doing and she just gives and gives. Look at that, oh, isn't that so great? And yet we do not focus on the receiving part. We consider the people who receive or the organizations that receive or the countries that receive or the receiving receivership portion as less than. The giving is the more and the receiving is less. That This is wrong. This is false. This is not true. Giving and receiving, it's a relationship where the receivership, we've got to really understand this portion of of this relationship because we focus so much on the giving and see it as such a big, strong, amazing, incredible thing. And we see the receivership as less than or 
not enough or so vulnerable that they can't even just like uh, not even vulnerable that's not the right word weak it seems like weak and fragile and less than and just so bad and so sad and no oh, let's feel bad for and it's like this comparison that happens and this comparison is toxic these are two sides of the same coin these are two parts of a whole when one is good and one is bad it lends us this concept of attracting ourselves or leaning ourselves or aligning ourselves more with the what we perceive as the good which is the giving but we can't give unless we can receive unless we can fully receive the paychecks the money the food the love of someone else the appraisals the 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 kindness the compliments all of these things if we receive them they build up within us and create this incredible amount of wealth in our own self-esteem and our confidence in our skill sets it, it it lends to then us creating a life for ourselves that is built on this solid foundation of trust our trust in ourselves of believing in ourselves of knowing that we can have courage then that is fueled by confidence to be able to try new things to be able to work on something to be able to commit to a longer term goal like an education that allows us to become doctors and scientists and teachers and all of the things we could not have these unless we could receive <clears throat> so in order for all of us to advance our humanity we must become better receivers receiving you are so good at receiving the negative aren't you let's be honest let's be honest look at the news it's sensationalized why is the media sensationalized why are we drawn into other people's dramas why do we watch television shows that are so dramatic why are we into true crime why because we're drawn into that negative we're drawn into <clears throat> under or having these these experiences with stories where things are so much worse off than we are oh they're so much worse off than we are or oh that's so bad or oh that's so this oh i'm glad it's not me and so we let our energies be derailed we let our focus be diminished on things that really don't matter really don't matter to us as a person to the influence that we have in our communities and our relationships in our families in our countries in our world we've got to focus on receiving receiving why do we receive negative so easily why is that why do we receive negatively negativity so easy like you receive criticism oh you notice that don't you don't you notice when don't you notice when especially when there's an injustice or especially when there's like two sides to every story and this person has says this and this person says that and you get all drawn into this drama whether it's on television or in real life <laughs> We receive the negative we receive the energy and your physical body gets all tight in your belly and your chest hurts and it and you just feel this fire burning up inside your belly and coming into your heart and you just become part of this 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 negative like this 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 anxious this just dramatic energy it just boosts inside of you it gets your blood pumping fast it's like this intensive reaction inside it's this chemical response to this negative receiving you're receiving the negative so easily and you notice it and yet it helps in a way it's this weird kind of drug or toxin that makes you feel alive and we as a society are addicted to that negative response that we have because the truth is it's really not affecting us personally it's not really about us personally we use this drama and this negative receiving to distract us from what we really should be doing in our lives what we really could be doing in our lives what we really could be making decisions on and and focusing on we could be 
going for a walk instead of watching that drama. We could be, instead of being on Facebook, we could be reading a book that's inspiring and encouraging. We could be spending time with our, our, uh, uh, our relative, whether it's over the phone, on Zoom, etc. We could be, there's so many other things we could be investing our time in, giving our time to, yet we're receiving negative. It doesn't even make sense. Like when you really think about it, it's ridiculous. So we know that we can receive because we do. I just showed you many ways that we do, many convoluted, strange ways that we receive the negative. How can we receive positive? How can we take the concept of receiving and make it a good thing, as strong and powerful and, and incredibly generous as, as giving is? Receiving is the new giving. Receiving is giving yourself space, room, time, energy, to allow yourself to receive, to maybe it's time in meditation, maybe it's a morning walk, maybe it's reading a book for 10 minutes before you start the day so that you have some kind of a inspired energy, creative energy within you. Maybe receiving is about cooking and preparing a healthy meal for you. Even though the kids aren't going to eat it, you're making them mac and cheese, you're making yourself a great healthy meal and you're allowing yourself to receive the space of time to allow yourself to meticulously prepare and cook and then take it in absorb it in receiving this beautiful service that you're giving to yourself while you're receiving do you see this see how giving shows up here see how receiving is a huge part of giving that we don't even understand we do not understand this it's a mystery it's giving is good receiving is less than no you know better and so do I. And now that I brought this topic up to you in a lot of different ways, understanding that we receive negative so easily, we receive criticism, we're able to accept things that are negative into our lives so much easier than we are at times positive things. Compliments, for example, that's the best one. Do you like feel really uncomfortable about that? Okay, that says something. Open your heart, let yourself receive, and then just respond with the thank you so that you feel this energy. Get used to feeling good receiving. Get used to allowing yourself time to receive. Just the room, like I said, to make a good meal for yourself, for example. Just for you. Even though you're cooking for four kids, like I understand, because I'm there, I'm there. And they're not going to eat some of the stuff I'm making, let me tell you, for myself. But when we do that, when we allow ourselves to receive in a way that we are nurturing ourselves, we are nourishing ourselves, we are honoring the energy that we are, we're recognizing that it's more than just a schedule, an hour in the day. It's an opportunity for us to receive. Everything is an opportunity. Driving, doing your commute to work, driving a long distance on a road trip, these are the opportunities to receive. What are you listening to in the radio? What are you receiving? Listening is a huge component of receivership, huge, massive. We could talk about that in a whole new Sunday morning coffee episode, and we probably should. And by no means am I a master of any of this. Let me just share. Because I'm a person, I'm a human in a body. There's no way I'm a master. I am not the be-all, end-all master and teacher of this. No, I'm sharing with you this receiving to give is the way. Because that's exactly what came up. That's what came through as an incredible piece of wisdom, a gift today. Are you giving to receive or are you receiving to give? This isn't just about money. The easiest way to look at this is, is in time. Time and money are the two major things that everybody talks about when there's life coaching, personal development, Um, Any kind of change, any kind of habit, whether it's exercising, starting to eat healthy, um, quitting an addiction, it's always about time and money. There's always this pressure that's created by this sense of time and money, which are commodities. And so when you think of giving and receiving, it's really easy to look at it in these terms. So instead of thinking about the monetary piece, think about the time piece and how valuable and precious your time is. Have we not learned that this year? In 2020, we have learned about time, haven't we? 
we have learned about time. And many people have learned that they're so confused about time. They have no idea how really, what to do with it when they get it, when you receive it. Wow. What do you do with this? What do I do with this? I don't even know what it's like to have my own time. Oh my gosh, I have free time. Oh my gosh, I have quiet time. Oh my gosh, I don't have a podcast blurring in my ear or I don't have 5,000 emails to answer and I don't have this and I don't have that. And there's not all this noise in the background. There's not all these multiple distractions going on. I don't know how to, how to just be with myself. I don't know how to receive this gift of time. I don't know how to receive this. I don't know what to do with this because then we start to receive more of ourselves. We start to receive this knowing of our sense of ourself. We start asking deeper questions about who am I? Who am I becoming? Who do I want to be? What do I want my life to look like? What decisions am I making here that are contributing to things that I've just always done? Or do I want something different? Do I want to change? You have autonomy over your own life. And receiving gives you the space, the room, the time to be able to acknowledge and recognize this. And that's how you build up self-esteem. That's how you build a relationship with yourself, self-trust. That's how you begin to have these cornerstones that give you courage and confidence in the future to make changes. It's not about being comfortable. It's not at all about being comfortable. It's about understanding. It's about expanding. It's about growing. When you receive so that then you can give, you win. You win it all, everything. You get happiness, the world benefits, the people around you benefit. You feel happy because you are connected. You really then understand the relationship between giving and receiving. It doesn't start with the giving. It starts with the receiving and you know how to receive. You know, so use it, use the concept of receiving to create space and room for yourself. Use it through time, carve out time for receiving, acknowledge it, identify it, make it a cornerstone of your spiritual practices, of your mental self-coaching, make receiving the cornerstone through which all things then will come not given to you randomly, but with purpose and intention, you're receiving that which you need to amplify, to strengthen, to encourage you as an energetic being, then in full expression as a human. Receive to give, my friends. Let's try to do this. Let's try to do it. We can. I know we can. Uh, Big sigh. Okay, you guys, deep stuff, deep stuff. Well, let's receive to give. Simple as that. Write it on a post-it note, put it on your journal, receive to give. Receive to give. Receive. Really start working with what this means for you. What does receive mean for you? What does receiving mean for you? What does receivership mean? mean for you? What kind of relationship do you have with receiving? In what ways can you do better in your receiving to help you right here, right now, to help your attitude, to help your mood, to help your mindset, to help you feel better so you can do better, so you can have clarity in your mind, so you don't have to be distracted So you actually can focus. When you receive, you build, you grow, you expand. Let's do this. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for listening to this Sunday morning coffee episode. It's my podcast. You can find it at Above Life channel on YouTube. If you're interested in my work and you want to connect with me more deeply, you can check out my websites at AboveLifeChannel.com. Find me on Instagram at Bridget Inspired and on Facebook at Bridget Inspired as well. I have an additional YouTube channel that you can watch. I have lots of vlogs there. I share everything intuitive about my life and such. I have a lot more creative freedom on Fairy Grasshopper channel. So I look forward to getting to know you and to connecting with you there as well. Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube.
Thanks for listening.